Welcome to the 2019 Avenger 35 RES. We're gonna start right in the back here. So you just get this little port right here that pops on open. And then you get the metal tab down in the bottom corner there, lines up with this metal tab here. You're just gonna push it in. Late eighth turn locks into place, and then the threaded collar in the back there, you can screw that on to really lock it in place. As we follow the cord back, got a 50 amp end right there. Now, not all campsites are gonna have that for you, which is why we provide you with this adapter here. So your 50 amp end will just go into there, and then your 30 amp into your outlet, which most campsites will have, all right? Now we do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter to go from the 30 down to 15, so you can plug in at home to run your fridge or charge your batteries. Right in the end of the bumper here, if we just pull that plug out, reach in a little bit, we've got your sewer hose in here. So just take note of those two ears there. That's how we'll hook it up to your sewer system. The hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Putting this cap back on there, just pressing it on, and that's that. We're just keeping that bumper, or sorry, just keeping that uh, hose in the bumper there just to help keep it out of the trailer, get rid of any sort of stench, all right? Right here, as well as in each corner of the trailer, we've got a stabilizer jack. So walking through the unit right now, you'd notice it's got a little bit of a bounce or a sway to it. What these guys are gonna do, they're just gonna come down to the ground, give them another turn or so just to firm them up, and that'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you got there. Straight up from it, we've got a cable and satellite inlet right here. So you're just gonna take a coax cable, plug it into there, and that'll fire up at your TV location. Coming down the side of the units, right here, right down the bottom, we've got your exterior shower. So you're gonna get a key that looks just like this guy here. It's just gonna stick on into there, open her up. And then you get the three foot hose with the standard head as well as hot and cold water. So if the dog's out getting muddy or whatever, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Straight up from there on the right, we've got your city water connection here. So you're just gonna take a water hose, plug it into there, turn on that water, and that'll just fill, fill up, uh, sorry, it'll just pressurize all of your water lines throughout the unit. Beside that, we've got the black tank flush. So you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped your tanks out, you know for a fact your black tank is empty, but it's still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. You're just gonna take the same water hose, stick it into there, open up your black valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Right up here, we've just got the vent for your stove. So of course, propane stove, whenever you're using it, is putting off fumes. So you just got this little flap in the back here. Just open that up, it just allows the fan inside to evacuate those fumes. Once you're done, you just press it back into place, and that's that, all right? Right here, you've got your hot water tank. So the controls for it are just inside. However, before you ever turn it on, you just want to come out here, make sure that it is full. So the way we're going to do that is just that keyway there lines up. You can pop it on open and just hit this release valve right there. That bit of water is going to come out. If it is full, that's letting you know it is full and you're safe to fire it up. If you don't get that water coming out, you just want to make sure your water system is turned on and this guy's full before you turn it on, just so that you don't go burning out your elements and such. All right. Right down here, right in the back, you've got a blue and a red. So those are just the low point drains for your water system. You just open that up, drains out that water system for you. So the purpose for that being, if you're leaving the trailer for a while, you don't want your water going stagnant, just open those up and drain them out. Or if you're winterizing the unit, you just want to get all the water out first, all right? Right here, you've got your sewer system. So this cap attaches the same way that your hose will. Again, just those two ears there, right? So it's just going to press on, turn, and lock into place, and that's that. On the left, you got a black valve. On the right, you got a gray. So your black valve is controlling your black tank. Your black tank is filled from your toilet. So typically gonna be your dirtiest water. You're gonna dump that first. And once that's done, you're gonna come over to the gray, which is filled. Can I get service personnel for the service counter, please? Service personnel. Which is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So typically cleaner water will dump that out last. Again, just trying to keep that hose as clean as possible. Just keeping any sort of smell away, all right? Right up here, you've got your furnace. So just whenever you're running that, you just wanna make sure that's not blocked off. It does get hot. Right here, we've just got a storage compartment. So in here, we keep the water hose for you, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. This is also where we'll store your uh, shore cord once we're done. And this little jack right here is just for running all of your stabilizers, all right? Right down here, this little drain, that's just for your fresh water tank. So if you wanted to dump that out, you're just gonna open up that valve, allows it to drain out. Right here's your fresh water tank fill. So it's just got that cap there, turn it, pops on off, take your water hose and stick it into there, turn on that water and that'll fill up that fresh water tank down there. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. And around to the front, right up on the frame there, we've got this little plug-in. So it's just a two prong plug-in for a solar panel, plugs into there, charges your batteries. Battery itself is right in this box right here. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or into your solar panel or three or seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. For your propane cover, you just got those two knobs there, push them back, you can open up the flap, and you've got access to your two nozzles there. For now, I'm just gonna pull it off. 
So you can see in the back here, that little indicator there is currently green, just letting you know there is propane in the system. You are safe to fire it up and good to go. If it were to go red, it's letting you know there's no longer any propane in there. At that point, you'd just be turning off this tank that we're drawing off of, taking this arrow to the other tank and opening that one up to draw off of that. You do have check valves inside there, so you can take this one tank off and go and get it filled while you're running off of that one there. Okay. In the front, we've got the power tongue jack, so the light switch on the left, retract and extend on the right. And over to this side of the unit here. We've got a TV mount outside, as well as a power outlet and a cable and satellite outlet out here. All right. Entrance to your front bedroom with a patio door entrance to get into your kitchen and living room. Little bottle opener here, as well as a little bit of storage space here as well. Now this compartment is accessible from underneath your dinette seat as well. Right. And I do believe that is about it for the outside with the exception of the leash latch back here. So if the dog's out, tie them down and then of course the spare tire in the back so we'll come up to the bedroom entrance where the stairs there are both the same we're just gonna grab this bar pull it out flip that bottom step over and that's that so in the back here you can see you got this little T latch that's just gonna fall into here just to hold that door open for you and as we come on inside We've got the bedroom right here, so of course all closed up right now. We can walk right through this door here. And you got the switch right here, so we're just going to press and hold the bottom of it. That's out. So that'll make its way out. The lights in the bedroom here, just on their own little switch there. So the same one up, up right in front of that roof vent there. Once this slide is fully extended, you'll just hear some clicks from the motors, letting you know they've reached their stall. Just like that right. so right back there you can see that grate that is the return air for your furnace so you just want to make sure that's not getting blocked off so right up top here we do have the roof vent so just going to turn that knob to open it up there you go uh, i do believe this is also pre-wired for a second air conditioner if you wanted to go and do that down the road the light switch again just on its own center there this light switch up top here does a little accent light across the front I didn't show you that piece outside, but that uh, window out there does open up. So you just have the two latches there. You're just going to open those up. We can pull this up. And then you just get the wing nuts on either side, tighten those down, locks it open. Okay. And so as we come inside, you can see that now becomes kind of a nice little viewing area. If you wanted to read a book there or something, it's a real nice peaceful spot. A little bit of closet space on either side of it. Right. All of your drawers right here as well. And then again, just the closet space on the other side there. Right down below it there, you've also got a USB outlet as well as a power outlet. A little bit more up top. In your bed, right at the head. We've got a light on either side. Okay. It's a little reading light if you want to call it that. And then just the storage across the top. Okay. And if we pick up the foot of the bed, you have a little bit of storage underneath there as well. Okay. So into the hallway here. The light is just on its own switch there. And then we've got your thermostat here. So, actually, I'll go through this in a minute. We'll open this guy up first. Right. So right here, you've got all of those controls. So on the bottom here, we've got your light switches. The one on the right there does your entrance light right above us here. The one in the center does your awning light outside. So the patio door just slides. And then the awning light is just straight up there. And then the light switch on the left there does your kind of pendant light above the uh, sink. So this light out switch on the right there does your kind of back living room there. Again, you're just going to hear the clicks from it once it's reached its stall. And 
then the slide out switch in the center is going to do the kitchen. Here's your awning. So press and hold the bottom of that and the awning will make its way out. So once it's once that awning is fully extended, you'll just see the little white flap at the end come down. Just right there. And so once that flap does come down, you want to stop and release that button. Otherwise it will wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water and accelerate the growth of mold and mildew. Now if it were to start raining, it's going to be holding water anyways. So what you can do is you can just come to either arm, front or rear, pull it down and in, tighten down that knob there, and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, just because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing at the front arm. Pulling it down and in, tighten it down, and then you get a bit more shade that way. All right. Now before you ever bring it back in, you want to make sure these guys are loosened right off and the arms are fully extended just so you don't go running the risk of bending anything. And another thing to keep in mind with it is it is basically just one big wind sock. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour of wind, you want to bring it back in anyways just so you don't run the risk of bending your arms. When you're coming back in, again, just making sure that fabric is over top of the tube. And that's that. So straight down on the floor from there, we've got your converter. So just press and hold, and press it top and center. You get all of your breakers across the top here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. On the right side here, you've got all of your fuses. If a fuse were to ever pop, you'll get a little red LED beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Power outlet up on the wall here. Storage all across the top. Right underneath it, you also got a light right here and up here. Okay. So sink with hot and cold water, of course. Storage underneath it. Just being mindful when using the storage, your drains are just right up here. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, once the time comes, you've just got three screws for this panel here. You'll pull that back, your water pump and your hot water tank are right behind there. A little bit of drawer space here, as well as on the other side. And into the kitchen. Again, the lights in this this light right here just has that push button on the front. Lights throughout the unit again, just on their own center switches. Okay. You get one up in here as well. And right on the back there, that switch does your backsplash. That backsplash we do have on order for you. So the microwave here, pretty standard, just like home. Below that, we've got your range vent. So we've got the light switch as well as the fan. So this is that fan that you want turned on whenever you're using this stove, just because that's what's evacuating your fumes, right? So the bifold cover just slips on back. Turn the knob over the little flame, hit the sparker, and there we go, it fires right up. Okay. Now the first couple of times, the well, first time you get out camping, if you've been sitting for a while, it might take a minute just to fire these guys up, just because it's got to clear all the air out of the lines. That's perfectly normal. On the right side here, you got the light switch. Turn that on, does all of your knobs as well as your stove. For your stove, we got this knob right on the right there. Turn it over to that little flame, hit it with a sparker, and right in the back there, you can see that little pilot light going. Once you get it going, you just hold the knob in for another couple of seconds, then you can release and it'll hold itself. Then you can turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, we're just gonna turn it back to pilot and it'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're going traveling or leaving the trailer for a while, you just wanna make sure that's right off. Underneath that's the little pots and pan storage. A little bit more storage beside it. Okay. Get your fridge here. So this is a 12 volt fridge. So as long as your battery is charged or charging, this guy is going for you. Freezer selection down here with the temperature selection just right on the top. Freezer. Again, temperature selection just right in the back there. A little bit of pantry space beside it. And right down in the bottom here, we've got your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector. In this side here, you got that one light with the storage across the top as well. 
emergency exit, you're just gonna pull that tab there, gets rid of the screen, take this handle, throw it outside, hop on out. You just hit that little light there, you get the little light inside of the cup holder, as well as USB charging on the front. You just pull up on the bottom here, it does fold down into a bed. Right. Folding it back up, picking up the foot and kind of encouraging the back back through it. Right. Another light right in the back here, storage across the top. Another light here as well. TV of course, so you'll get a little pouch that'll have all of your manuals and your remotes in it. That'll be your TV remote being there. And on this side here, you've got a little power outlet. And on the other side, we've got your antenna and cable outlet. So you get that little button right there. You get has that green light on. With that light on, that is your antenna turned on. So that's just the outletting through this coax cable here. Above that is a 12 volt outlet and another 120 volt outlet in the back. For your stereo here, you're just gonna hit that knob, turns it on. So your band is, or sorry, mode is just gonna kind of select through all of your modes. So you get into FM1 here, and we can hit band. It'll go into FM2 and 3, and then you get your AM1 and 2 as well. Seeking through everything is just over on the right side here. Zone 1 is your inside set of speakers. Zone 2 is your outside set. Display is just gonna change it between time and setting, all right? And that's pretty well it. As you hook up uh, all of your other connections, so like auxiliary, that'll come up as an option. HDMI, HDMI will come up as an option as well. And USB is just charging. A little bit more storage below. Pressing the knob, sorry, we'll go into your settings. All right, so you can cycle through all of that. Press and hold to turn it off. Same sort of slide on this side. You get the light with the storage as well as the fold-out couch. So for this one, a little bit different. We're pulling these bottom cushions out, getting them off to the side. Grab on this handle here, we'll swing it out, we'll fold it over, and there's your bed. All right, when we're done, we're just picking up the foot, folding it over, grabbing it by this handle here, up and in, and it pretty well does it all for you. Cushions back in place. And that's that. The big recliner here, you're just gonna pull on the sides either end, and that'll kick out the feet. Okay. And actually right above our heads here, we've just got the smoke detector. Alright. And now I will go through your thermostat. Alright. So we're gonna come back over here. So we can see right in the bottom left here, we're starting from off and going to fan and that'll turn on just the fan. It's just moving air. There's no cooling involved there. Select our speed over on the right side. And when it comes to using the on high or low, we're just going to use that for our fan. Otherwise we're going to want to leave it in auto high or low. The reason for that being is if you're in heat, trying to run your furnace, it could actually turn on the air conditioning fan, which just defeats the purpose, right? So once fan, if we're done just moving air and we actually want to cool things, we'll move it right over to cool. We'll select our temperature and then we can go over to our air conditioner. So you basically get two different options with it. You can have these two louvers here closed, in which case it's moving all of its air through all of these ceiling ducting. Or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you're going to want to open that up, cool off this area as quickly as you can, and then close it off to move the air throughout. So that's kind of where having the second air conditioner option in the front bedroom is really nice because then you can clean up or cool off that bedroom quicker rather than the living room. And so once the cooling is done, you can come back to off and we'll go into heat, select our temperature again, and the furnace will turn on. The furnace is moving its air through all of the floor registers, so you get the one here, a couple throughout the living room. Right. And when we're done, we'll just set it at off. Right. Into the bathroom here. So the light switch up on the wall just turns on the one light. This one here, again, its own center button there. The roof vent just turning to open. The addition of the switch in the corner there for turning on that fan. Toilet with the little flusher right in the front there. Storage across the back here. 
the shower, of course, standard head, hot and cold water, medicine cabinet. It also provides you with that little sample for your toilet. So before, you know, you've used it a couple of times, you'll take that whole bottle and you're just gonna dump it down there. It just helps degrade everything, help keep, a, help keep things smelling a bit nicer. Hot and cold water at the sink, the storage below it. Again, just being mindful of your drains down there. So right up here, you've got your actual GFR protected outlet. So if any of your outlets don't work, this is a good thing to come and check. Test on the left, it turns on that light, reset it and it'll turn them back off. Get your monitor panel on the side here. So the switch down in the bottom corner is your water pump, it turns on the pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. Straight up from there, we get your monitor system, some battery there. You can see we're currently at C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, and L is low. So because we're plugged in right now, we're currently charging. Fresh water tank, so as you fill that up, it'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Right up here, your hot water tank controls. On the right side, you get that little flame down in the bottom there. That's for turning it on with propane. Hit that switch there and fire up with propane. All right, so stood right here, you can actually just hear that one click and that where that flame going, we know that's good. If you were to get this little red light in the center here, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, you just be turning it off and back on to reset it. On the left side there, down in the bottom, you get that little thunderbolt. It just indicates that we're turning it on with electricity. Right? Lastly, just right by the patio entrance here, we've got your fire extinguisher. So, of course, you just want to be able to know where that is. Pull the pin, point and shoot, standard. And uh, I do believe that's about it. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.